Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Verdi's La Traviata, which was live from the Metropolitan Opera House. The conductor was Nicola Luisotti, the production was done by Willy Decca, the sets and costumes were done by Wolfgang Gussmann, the lights were handled by Hans Dolstede, and the choreographer was Atoll Farmer. I was anticipating this particular production of Traviata because of the leading singers Sonia Yoncheva as Violetta, Michael Fabiano as Alfredo, and Thomas Hampson as Giorgio Germont. I'll gladly talk about their performances much later along with the other singers in the supporting roles, but first, my thoughts on the production. I also have this production on DVD, though it was back in the Salzburger Festspiele back in 2004, 2005, and it starred Anna Netrebko and Rolando Firazon as Violetta and Alfredo respectively, and it also had Thomas Hampson as the Germont of this particular production. And I am not really a fan of the Vildeca production because every time I would think about any production of La Traverta, I would love it to have a lot of elaborate scenery and a lot of style and elegance and beauty. But I think this particular production of Traviata basically shows the emptiness in Violetta's heart and the huge clock on the stage basically shows that her whole lifetime is running out, especially for someone who is still quite young. The costumes were also quite simple. Violetta, throughout the entire opera, wears a red dress and red shoes and her party guests along with Alfredo and Giorgio are all in blazers and black pants and ties, especially her friend Flora. The only one who still manages to be in a dress is Anina, though she's dressed in black. And what's also quite noticeable is the usage of flowers. As we see Alfredo and Violetta in the second act, as they are in a floral looking bed and they have robes of many flowers, albeit a potpourri of different flowers, just to show that Violetta has an affinity with every flower that she likes, especially that of camellias, and especially the flower which she holds, most specifically a camellia, which states that her youth and beauty are going to be lost along with her life in the end of the opera and as soon as she dies we see a whole series of red roses on the ceiling to show that even though Violetta has died her beauty and her overall youth will still remain eternal. So overall while I'm not a huge fan of this production done by Veridecca there were some really interesting moments, but ultimately it's not really my cup of tea, even though there were some positives here and there. And now we get to the singers, starting off with Sonia Yoncheva, who sang Violetta Valeri. And my goodness, was she absolutely wonderful. She not only sang the role exceptionally, but she managed to inhabit Violetta with the appropriate amount of poignancy and she was able to be very moving in this particular role. Yes, she's not really a super high singer as she didn't sing the high E flat after Sempre Libera, but I have to give her loads of credit for her superb characterization, her great musicianship, and her innate theatricality thus making Violetta come alive as a character. She was so poignant, so moving, and you could definitely feel the fragility she was able to give with this particular character and the exuberance she gives, even though it's mainly a facade for her crippling health and how she is almost about to kick the bucket as soon as the time runs out. She was able to inhabit this role superbly that I was completely glued to everything she had to offer. She sang everything exceptionally and she was able to give such a superb characterization, thus making Violetta very emphatic and very much someone whom the viewers can be involved in watching her journey from her life as a courtesan all the way up to 
her tragic passing at the end of the opera. She manages to have us, the audience, eating out of the palm of her hand, and she convinced us superbly. She was an overall magnificent performer, and she was able to do such wonderful works with one of her signature roles. Michael Fabiano was absolutely exceptional as Alfredo. And what makes him stand out is his youthful, charismatic, and wonderful stage presence. He was able to be so exuberant, so involved in everything he does as Alfredo that I was practically having my jaw drop as he was on stage complete with a lot of grace, elegance, charm, and that fine lyric tenor voice which he managed to just emit so well. He did start off as a sort of lighter lyric tenor, but as time went on, Mr. Fabiano started to sing a lot more of the spinto tenor roles like Don Carlo and even that of Rodolfo from Luisa Miller. And he certainly has a wonderful future in these slightly meatier tenor roles, all thanks to his fine and incisive tenor voice. And he was able to just be so involved in the role of Alfredo. And he was able to sing all of his music, not only exceptionally, but he was able to embody Alfredo with the great amount of exuberance, a great amount of youthful ardor and he was able to be so ardent in this role that he practically won me over every time he was on stage and his chemistry with Sonia Yoncheva as the Violetta was superb. They were absolute professionals when it comes to how their voices blended. They were able to really react out of each other and play off of each other superbly that I was practically immersed in everything they had to offer as the tragic lovers. So what more can I say about Mr. Fabiano? He was not only an exceptional singer with a great future, but also a fine and charismatic performer. Thomas Hampson was solid as always in the role of Giorgio Germont. And while he's not a true dramatic baritone, he certainly has a good amount of charisma and charm to bring this role to life. He's been seeing this role for a good amount of years, thus finding out a lot of nuances and a lot of facets which make this particular Jamon come to life. And he did a fine job with his aria, The Provenza Mario Suol, and he did a fine job on his characterization making him a struggling father who wants his son to be reunited with him and his family. And I could definitely see the pain in Mr. Hampson's eyes as he played the Father Jamon. He was quite convincing as an actor and he was solid as a singer, even though I do prefer a meteor sounding true dramatic baritone voice. But I digress. I still have to give a lot of credit to Mr. Hampson for a job well done in embodying Giorgio Germont. So with such great leading singers, what about the supporting singers? Well, they were also fine all throughout. We have the great pleasure of having the likes of Rebecca Jo Loeb's youthful, and beautiful sounding Flora Bervois, Jane Bunnell's matronly and lovely Anina, Dwayne Croft's handsome, dashing, and cello-toned Dufol, Scott Scully's lyrical and handsome Gastone, Jeff Matzi's fine, handsome, and round voice Marquesa d'Aubagny, James Courtney's fatherly Dr. Granville, and even Paul Corona as a gentleman, Ju Huan Li, who sang the role of Giuseppe, and Brandon Mayberry, who sang the role of the messenger. So overall, the singing was well done, especially from the likes of Sonia Yoncheva and Michael Fabiano, who were the absolute standouts among the main players and even among the singers in general. They shone the brightest. 
and their chemistry as the tragic lovers of Violetta and Alfredo was superb. And the conducting done by Maestro Nicola Luisotti was also well done. He led the chorus and orchestra of the Met really well. And of course, what more can you expect from the chorus and orchestra of the Metropolitan Opera House? They were exceptional. So overall, even though I am not a fan of the Villideca production of La Traviata, I still have to give it to the singers, the people behind this production, and of course, the conductor, the chorus, and the orchestra, a lot of kudos for a job well done and for their efforts being well collaborated to make something as brilliant as La Traviata. And for those of you who saw this particular production of La Traviata at the Metropolitan Opera House, what did you think of it? Did you feel like Sonia Yoncheva, Michael Fabiano, and Thomas Hampson did their absolute best in their roles? Did you feel like there was a singer from the minor characters who stole the show and even their thunder? Or did you feel like the entire thing just didn't really hold up too well? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for my review of the classical Italian opera concert at the Chiesa di Santa Monaca. So until then, good night, everybody.